All right, we're back live in the counselor's corner for another wonderful episode. I'm your host, David Lorenzo Glover, a.k.a. C2, a.k.a. the Controversial Counselor. And tonight I am so excited because we're adding another segment to the counselor's corner, and that'll be hanging with Herbert. So he'll be coming on having a 10 minute segment, dropping information that he wants to discuss. So we have several people on already. So let's see. Uh, Ebony Swanson, thanks for joining. Jen Duff, thanks for joining. Nellie, thanks for joining. Donna. Lewis, thanks for joining. Jude, uh, June, thanks for joining. Angela, thanks for joining. Um, Julio, thanks for joining. And um, Sharon, thanks for joining. Appreciate you all. Uh, who else is Cicely, thanks for joining. So, and Michelle Cox, thanks for joining. Maya Van, thanks for joining. So, um, we're rolling right now. And remember, people, please share, share, share the video. So tonight's topic um, is called, Can I Hold Your Whip? So I'm going to read the, uh, I'm not going to even get into that first, because y'all know I'm usually all over the place. I swear sometimes I think like, man, do I got ADHD sometime? Uh, Dietrich Muhammad, thanks for joining. Let me turn this down. You know how I like to start off the show with, uh, my counselor's concerns. And somehow I just got kicked out of this. Oh. So I had a couple concerns, but then I just had to add one to, to it. So I'm trying to debate um, which one I'm going to eliminate. All right. One of my concerns is, you know, as you stroll through sometime Facebook and you see all these different videos. And one of the videos I seen, I don't know where it was at, but I just seen it was a police officer. And he actually, and I think it was the mother, daughter, and the way he body slammed the daughter, like physically uh, body slammed her. Um, and, that, and that was an issue for me because it wasn't like she was putting up any like uh, resistance. Did somebody come in? The big bad wolf. The big bad wolf. Well, hold tight, big bad wolf. I just want to go over my concerns, and then I'm going to bring you in for your segment of Hanging with Herb. All right. Um, so we got Herb on here. We got Daniel Wood. Thanks for joining. So my issue was that, and I made a post. And, you know, and, and, and stuff like that irritates me when I think people, uh, when police officer, and I think it pissed many people off with, with this excessive force. But it's one certain person, and I said I was going to call her out today, and I am. Usually I don't call out names, but I am, and I'm going to start calling out names. Um, Yolanda Williams, yes. So she painted this picture like, oh, not any police officers I know, because what I basically said, when I see stuff like that using excessive force, especially when someone's not even really putting up any resistance, I made the comment that, man, they have to be pretty much, not all, but some of them have to be kicking their wives' ass at home. So she's like, not the ones that I know. So anybody know her, she paints the picture like she lives in this perfect world, like nothing ever happens. If I said um, a great deal of black people ate chicken before, she'll say, oh, not any black people I know. We never ate fried chicken. That's just the type of stuff that she say, so I don't know what. But I told her to come on because the comment she made pretty much said something like I was incompetent. So I just wanted her to come on and like we match wits. I didn't think she would come on, but uh, I told her I was going to call her out. And I'm going to continue to call her out until she comes on. <laughs> now, I don't know if I'll do all that. Um, Melissa, thanks for joining me. Big Willie Cauley, thanks for joining me tonight in the counselor's corner. Also, another concern I have, and this kind of superseded all. Listen, parents, listen. 
it's the summertime. I know sometimes you like to let your kids um, freelance a little bit, but it's not cool when it's eight to 10 of them and they're hanging in front of other people's houses. It's not cool. That's not a good look. So that should be one of the things that you're teaching them to stay in front of out of out of people in front of people's houses. Go somewhere else. Go to parks. Do something or stay in front of your own damn house. How about that? So I just seen about 10 kids all around my car. Uh, not directly in front of my house, but my neighbor, she's probably about 85 over there. So I say, y'all need to move it down. Kindly, kind words, because I'm not, you know, me working in the school system. I'm not really going to uh, get into no major arguments with these kids so said it nicely and one of the kids started to get smart then one of the other older kids like no hold on hold on hold on no don't but they were like why we gotta leave i said do any of y'all live right here no uh because it's not your house well we just chilling we just chilling on the corner why don't you go chill in front of your house uh because we just chilling right here why don't you go chill in front of your house see and there's going to be people, and you already know, that's not going to carry it like I'm going to carry it. They're going to tell, get your ass from in front of my house or something. They're going to go, go, get, they're going to go get that heat or something, a bat or something to run their asses out of it. Then y'all will be wondering why <laughs> these adults jumping on your kids, you have to tell them, stay in front of your house or go somewhere else. You can't just be 10 deep. That's not a good look. Because you don't know who house you're in front of. You could be in front of, like I said, the 85-year-old um, elderly white woman house, but her son could be a cop or whatever the case is. But it's just their smart mouth, always got to give adults. Uh, and, and, I, and I just know growing up, I mean, we used to try and do our little stuff, but that's the one thing my mother, my grandmother used to always say, get from in front of them people, especially if they seen them going back and forth with us, they would make sure y'all yeah, stay right here, get from in front of them people house before uh, some trouble um, happened. No, not these kids. So I don't know what these parents doing. I don't know if yeah, they smoking in the house, having sex, doing whatever, but they need to wake up and uh, start handling their damn business, and especially these little girls, whatever. I just think they roam around too loosely and hanging in packs with boys it's not cool, but when you but nine months later, when somebody walking around uh, with it, when when and they fourteen, and now you got to take care of them. You're gonna be feeling like um, shit, Frederick. Oh, what's going on, Frederick, the master barber? Frederick, I can't stand this generation of young people. Yeah, it's something else, man. And I'm like, and let me just walk away from this because this is not. It's not cool. Marquito um, Riley, thanks for joining me tonight in the council's corner. It's just, it's not, it's not cool, but it's frustrating to say the least, but we know that somebody has to, somebody has to monitor it. And lastly, because I'm going to be on the time thing, because hanging with Herb, he's going to have his segment. I just got to give a shout out, uh, and this is more, well, it's a couple RIPs. First, RIP, um, rest in peace to uh, the great Pernell Whitaker who passed, mm. I don't know, was it, uh, was it this morning or something? Uh, got hit by a truck. Uh, he was a welterweight, lightweight, one of the um, best boxers that did it. Gold medal winner. He was Floyd before Floyd. Uh, defensive genius, couldn't really hit him. Uh, nice as hell and died at the age of 55 got hit um in virginia and man that's just not a way to go out and i was a big fan of pernell sweet pea so uh you know just shout out and rest in peace for him um condolences to his family and man it's crazy the way things um happen frederick said no respect at all it starts at home though exactly Angela said you froze. Yeah, sometimes that happens, Angela. I apologize. And also want to give a uh 
you know, my regards at Niagara Falls to one of my longtime friends from the fourth grade, LaRuth Harris. Um, she passed away and that, you know, that's kind of heartfelt because anybody know Ruthie, she probably is one of the nicest people in the world. I, I don't know anybody who had anything negative to say about her. And I know for me, she kind of kept me balanced in school. Not like I was out of control. It was more so I was quiet, but yet certain things socially, because I was quiet, I would always say, it would always be easier for me to say, I'm not doing it. But she was the type uh, to say, oh, you're going to do it. You're going to do it if I have to come pick you up um, and I have to drag you there. So she would be the one that kind of kind of would help bring me out my shell and it, she's going to be missed. And she impacted, you know, so many people just with her kindness, her smile. And it's just, you know, my heart is crushed. Uh, and she ended up dying, you know, due to cancer. And, you know, that cancer thing is a mean thing. And it's just, you know, the world, the world is a better place with her. And, well, you know, we just, you know, we got to continue on, but it's just hard to think that she's not going to be around anymore. And I haven't seen her in a while. We would, you know, message through Instagram and text here and there, but, um, and she's gone. And uh, I'm really not going to uh, belabor that because I don't want to get too emotional, but I just know, like, she was, she was good people. Man. And it's just, man, that mortality, it, it gets real when you get a certain age. Um uh, Angela said she can't hear anything. Is anybody else having any problems hearing anything? Anybody? Yay, nay, say something up. Kashan Allen, thanks for joining. Uh, Cassandra, thanks for joining me tonight in the counselor's corner. Herb, can you hear me? Yes, man, I can hear you and I can see the broadcast. So I think uh, Angela might be experiencing the issues on her end. Okay, I was just wondering. Uh, Frederick, you're saying, no, you can't hear me? Oh, Ms. Angela saying, um, I'm back now. Okay, I don't know what's going on. Ooh. Got everything lined up. I, so the volume's up. I turned it up higher now, so I know that should be much louder. <laughs> All right, so here we have it. Anybody, um, I could read the introduction, but Herb, you don't need no introduction because you've been kind of <laughs> creating fire from day one on my platform. And anybody knows I had a show, Cocktail Conversations, and I had a, a internet blog talk show for, I did it for like three and a half years. And Herb came on from day one and he was one of the main fixtures of the show and he responds on the post. Anybody know Herb? He'd give it to you like how it is. And a lot of people just can't take that and they make comments. Oh, his bias, uh, he's chauvinistic and things like that without directly hearing the person, hearing them out. So, and also, you know, when someone says something that may be a little truthful, um, and, and the way they deliver it, and if it makes you feel uncomfortable, you automatically just going to tune it out and make it seem like that's the worst person. But her being her, he don't care. <laughs> he doesn't care. So, and some people may say, oh, I'm just going to lighten up a little bit. So her's been part of all of my platforms. So I'm like, you know, I reached out to him like, man, you might as well have a segment in the counselor's corner. So here we have it hanging with Herb. So I don't even know what's on Herb's mind. I'm sure it could be a lot. So Herb, he's in the politics, sports, relationships, you name it. So uh I'm gonna go ahead. You know, man, today I was gonna break out with the uh with the old with the old school song It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood by Mr. Robinson. But uh, I'm gonna let that ride for for right now. But you know I was when 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 you approached me, well first of all let me give a shout out and a and a huge thank you to Lady Jazz. She's the one as you mentioned previously, she's the one that actually gave me my first opportunity to do a live show uh, similar to what you're doing. So I want to uh, extend a, a great deal of gratitude for her because if it's not for her, I certainly don't have the opportunity to present this small segment on your show. And I don't know what you would have become. So um, a great deal of thank you goes to her and her uh, extension to you and by virtue extension to me to be able to do this. So I'm always going to be grateful to her for that opportunity and then yourself uh, for, for this opportunity as well. And like you said earlier, 
I want to uh, echo my condolences to you personally for, for the loss of your friend and for uh, Purnell's passing. And I think as we get older, we don't, we don't tend to realize how precious things are in terms of our relationship with, with other humans. Just about two weeks ago, I had a, what I call a good soul clenching cry. I was having a conversation with a, an, old, an older friend who's known me probably longer than I'm, I've known myself. And I've always prided myself or never crying in front of other people. That's always been a mainstay of mine. And it was, we just had a discussion, and it just came around. As some people may know, my mother was suffering from colon cancer a few years ago, and she was kind of a lesson with me in the situation that just got to a point where I could no longer take it. So I had to send her out of my care to somewhere else. This lady's aunt is undergoing bone uh bone cancer treatment so we were sitting there talking and it just got to the point where it overwhelmed me and i just like i said i had a good soul clinching cry so people you know reach out to people you haven't spoken to in a while and and see how they're doing because you never know what your words can do for somebody else mm -hmm. so i want to make sure i get that out the way now like i said initially when you approached me with this i was going to try and clean the slate really i was i was going to, i was going to come in and talk about something upbeat but then I started reading some of the comments, and I'm going to mention a person by name, Gail. Everybody seems to think that I am a quote-unquote black woman basher. I am not. What I speak about are topics that are relevant to black men. And sometimes topics that are relevant to black men are irrelevant to black women. We are on opposite sides of the divide. And it's going to be like that when black men who are accountable, who hold themselves to a higher level of responsibility, speak out on the ills in our communities and in our culture. We don't seem to understand that our culture is in our hands. And more so, it's in black women's hands because black women and, and women across any culture are the teachers of that culture. Men are the guardians of that culture. With that statement, we have to ask, what do we value in our culture? What are we teaching our kids? It's like you mentioned, you said earlier with the kids that were congregating in, in in your neighborhood, they didn't want to move on. That's, that was a basic tenet of what we grew up with. Respect your elders, respect authority, and if somebody tells you to do something and it's not hurtful, do it. It costs you nothing to save you an ass with them when you got home because you were disrespectful or unruly. Not because you did anything wrong, but because you didn't do what you were told. Mm -hmm. And I had this conversation with my brother, older brother, uh, a few days ago about the disconnect between our parents' generation and this generation. I said, we, we people my age, I just stopped getting my, like I said, my brother's a little older than me. He has, his oldest child is, I think, 26. So we stand in a breach, and I have to ask myself, what is it that we didn't teach that our offspring needs to know about? Have we taught them what the struggle was for them to be able to walk down the street and most of guys are molested by people? Have we taught them what it means to actually be free and to exhibit free behavior? Have we taught them the repercussions of making bad decisions? Have we taught them about what it means to be a productive citizen, to go out to work and earn? Because it seems like a lot of this generation doesn't want to do that. They don't want to work hard. They don't want to do this. They think everything should be given to us. But you will see them out on these videos twerking, doing all the stuff in games and game fights and doing everything imaginable under the sun except for being good kids, working, getting good grades. Do we teach them about finances? Now, if I were to take black boys and black girls and switch them, and we have black girls that were first in being incarcerated, last in education and graduation rates, last in being unemployed the only thing i can't say about black women black young black girls or black women in general about that i can't say about black men is their pregnancy rates and everybody harps on me when i mention this and they don't understand so i'm gonna i'm gonna extrapolate the 19 percent of of men versus the 80 percent of women that have children by multiple people if we were to take 
the number of men who have children by multiple women versus the women who have multiple children by multiple men, which gender would have more people missing if we were to eliminate them? And this is what people don't understand about the statistics. And we get a lot of black women that when we say this, we get pushed back and they fail to understand why. If we are, and I say we because men are culpable too. If I say we are responsible, that means that men are being held accountable. It's just not the men that women won't be held accountable because those men are out there engaged in that activity. But the women are. So when I say we, I'm including men and women as well. I'm focusing on that female principle because you guys set the pace. You guys have the culture in your hands. You have the ability to choose life. You have the ability to choose a mate. You have the ability to stop pregnancy before it ever happens. With that responsibility is a great weight. Unfortunately, most of that weight is on your shoulders. And it doesn't matter the demographic. It matters the female. Because I've seen females that are educated, employed, well-spoken, and they seem to choose that man that doesn't have a lot going for them. And I can't figure out why. And it wasn't until I started listening to some external people speak about these things that I got a greater understanding of why women make some of the decisions that they make. And, and it, it just clicked. I said, you know, hmm. Because I had an epiphany when I was 30. I had, I had my fair share of dealing with women. And contrary to popular belief, most of those, I would say 90% of those dealings have not been with black women. This is why I don't speak down on black women. I speak down on the things that they do. There is a difference. Just like we have righteous black men that do some, some damnable things to women. They need to be called out. They need to be held accountable. I don't have a problem with that. So when I speak on black male topics, is not from my experience perspective. It's from the communal and cultural perspective because I see it. I just don't have to suffer through it because I don't have any kids. I'm not on the street selling dope. I work. I'm involved in the community. I've been involved in politics. I'm still trying to put together a mentoring program. So trust me, I'm above that break. I'm not influenced by pop culture. I'm not influenced by the nonsense. People hanging out, that's not what I do. It just isn't. I was I was I was out recently with somebody at the Taste of Buffalo and I was just kicking with her about all the things that people like yourself and myself can do. I said, look, if I'm gonna go somewhere, I wanna go to Toronto, I make plans, you know, I'm out. There's a lot of brothers that can't do that for things that have done in the past and we have to ask ourselves, why is it like that? Well hold on, hold on, Herb, I have to interrupt mm -hmm. you on that one. I, I I can go to Toronto. I just happen. No, no, you can. Yeah, you can. No, no, no I'm, I'm just saying we have the ability. No, I want to. No, no. I, uh, there's a story behind that. I can go, but I get pulled over all the time and have to go into that immigration building because uh, one of my homeboys, it, they probably not watching. Maybe they are. They never confess. They stole my birth certificate in 1994, and they tried to use it. And, and they got a warrant for their arrest. So I'm letting you know live that it's a warrant for your arrest. So if y'all black asses try to go back to Canada, you're going to jail. And they said, until then, they're going to continue to pull, uh, make me go into customs. And they said, we know you didn't do yeah. anything. We just have to make everything sure everything is clear. I had to pull out my ID and all that stuff. So I just wanted to get that off. <laughs> Yeah, man, it's it's crazy, but you know, and this is what I and this is you know, these are some of the aims that I'm looking to teach the younger kids, particularly the younger males, because a lot of them don't have good male role models. They just don't exist for them. They walk outside, particularly here in Niagara Falls, with with Niagara Falls being as economically impoverished as it is, they walk outside and they don't see anything, so they don't aspire to be anything. So if I can reach in my pocket and take out some money and make a difference, I, I do that. And I have done that. Three years ago, I took our basketball team, uh, my diamond at the time, I was unemployed. I reached in my pocket and took out $1,500, paid for the entire trip to Pittsburgh. We had one mother that sent her son out of town with no money. And you know what? He didn't want for anything. 
when we got back, not a thank you from any of the parents. That's why I speak harshly about women and particularly black women because they feel as if they had a right to what black men, rights as black men, have earned. And they don't return the sincerity that they should. And it makes doing things for the community difficult. Now, can I chime in on that? Can I chime in on that, Herb? Yes. This is what I see. And Niagara Falls is, you know, my hometown. Love it. Always back there. Go back there quite often. I see a lot of people doing stuff for the um, community. Uh, you know, I see the, the, the young guns, the San Quins, the Ezra Scotts. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. I see Keith Muhammad trying to do something. I see you. I see mm-hmm. Chet mm-hmm. and different things, people like that. But I think the problem is that these people get um, – it's almost to a sense that they're getting enabled. They, they expect this stuff to happen. They expect free coats and book bags and stuff like that. So it, it teaches them maybe the mentality that they don't have to do anything because they know that somebody else is going to pick up the slack instead of, you know, for me, if it was me, I would say, man, I can't live like this. Like if, if I need assistance one time, um, one time I'm, I'm going to think to myself, I got to make it better so I don't have to go through and um, look for someone to take care of me the, the next time. I'm going to have to do better or find ways, but I sometimes I don't see that happening. And this is just stuff that I see on social media and stuff. I'm like people constantly giving, giving, and giving. But then when it's coming come to, to support, these people don't support nothing. <laughs> it, man, it, it's, it's terrible. It, it really is. And like you said, San Quentin, Keith Muhammad, uh, Ezra Scott, who uh, I believe has just uh, achieved his uh, master. So shout out to you, Ezra. Uh, good work, man. Despite your, you know, your little setback, you've managed to keep pushing forward, and that's what it's about. You can never let a mistake or a lapse in judgment to derail you, especially as a black man, because it's hard in America. Now, people just really don't understand that unless you are in an intimate relationship with a black man or you've seen him persevere through the struggles. Because, you know, sometimes we make it look easy because people just say, you know, how do you do it? it it's not. It, it just really isn't. I mean, you can, you can ask Fred, who, who turned himself into a, a, a phenomenal professional barber, all the things that he's had to go through, all the things that he's had to deal with. Every, it's, it reminds me of a line from the uh, movie Tuskegee Airmen, where Captain Ben, uh, Lieutenant Major uh, Benjamin, walks in, he says, every pilot went through their own private hell to wear these wings. And he said, are we to be Americans only when the mood suits you? He said, all we ask is for a fair and impartial opportunity. He said, I thought we had that. So, I mean, that right there, you know, I, I, I watch those type of movies because I look for those type of moments and it's just like, yeah, that's it. It's like, we're invited to somebody's houses to play poker houses. We're invited to somebody's home to play poker and they give us a fixed deck, and then when we complain, they say, well, you should be lucky that you're allowed to play. Hmm. Wait a minute. Our ancestors fought for this country. They were hung in their uniforms, castrated, chased out of their homes, killed, all for being black. Nothing else. So, yes, I'm going to always stand on my, on my stoop and speak about black male issues, because if I don't, who does? You want a strong black man, but you want him strong to suit you. You want him quiet. You want him meek. You don't want him to speak. You just want him to look good and be a manual labor so you can stand there and look good. Mm-hmm. Black women, you have always been number one in the black community. Black men have been a footnote. We've been looked at as manual laborers, fathers for your children, and, and now that's being removed because now I'm looking around and see women are celebrating fathers. They like it their own. And I'm thinking, what kind of what kind of what mindset is that? All of a sudden, now you're an asexual creature. You produce them without anybody else. Yeah, and I only see that the vast majority of that from women who have selected a man that ain't worth a damn. Yes, there are men out there and they ain't worth a damn. But you're giving it to them. You serve it to them on a silver platter. But when a rising man comes along, you make them jump through hoops. Hmm. I don't. I don't know. Fred says, self-made big herb. A lot of people well. want the success, but not sacrifice. I've come to yeah. see. 
um, so, you know, it, it's crazy, man. So, um, the, the thing when I came with this, I said, you know, we're going to have the hanging with Herb segment because I reduced my time. I felt like it wasn't to my advantage to be on here an hour and a half because when you go through replay and put it on YouTube, nobody's going to sit there and watch some. That's like watching a movie uh, hour and a half. So I try to cut it to an hour. So I wanted to give Herb like 15 minutes, even though I interrupted, but you know, that happens. But Herb is more than welcome to stay on. But I did want to get to the topic in hand. And like I said, and the title was called, Can I um, um, Hold Your Whip? So Herb, if you don't mind staying on. Um, oh, absolutely, man, I'm here. So uh, that's going to be the end of um, hanging with the Herb segment. I don't mean to end it abruptly. I just want to get on if people wanted to tune in to hear about um, some of these talking points and we won't get through um, many of them, but we can at least start that dialogue. If everybody who came on and I didn't give a chance to shout out, um, thanks for joining me in the counselor's corner. So here's pretty much the introduction. Um, have you ever been in a relationship where it was one sided and your partner took advantage of you constantly? Well, check this out. Tina got in the habit of letting Tony use her vehicle. He would drop her off at work and would appear that he did not did a lot of joy riding. Well, one morning she was trying to get a hold of Tony for hours, but was unsuccessful. The issue was that Tina's daughter had overdosed on pills because she was upset she could not return back to college for her senior year. Eventually, Tina caught a cab to the hospital in which she had to pay $50. I wonder what Tony was doing. So, excuse me, well, y'all yeah, know I cuss on. Ain't that a bitch. He got your car. <laughs> you blowing him up. He joyriding, joyriding, and you got to catch a damn cab for $50. And your daughter overdosed, and you in panic mode, and he's chilling. So, you know, you, you have to think about some of these things, like, as far as relationship. I mean, I don't know. People like to say relationships, oh, everything is 50-50. I don't know if many of them are 50-50. Uh, certainly, I hope it would be closer to 50-50. I hope it wouldn't be 80-20 or that type of imbalance. But we have to understand that every time you go into a relationship, people have their agendas. They have a they have a motive for a reason why they are in the relationship. Whether it's love, some people do it for shelter, some people do it for finances, some people do it for sex. There's a reason. So you have to figure that out. Um, you just can't automatically assume that 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 person is just crazy about you and they just want to uh be with you like that so i mean again feel free people you can call in if you have anything that you want to say and i'm just going to go through some of the talking points i had and the number is it's, it's posted on the introduction but 605-313-5375 the access code is 669542 so I'm just going to go through some of the uh, talking points. And again, like I said, feel free to chime in. Uh, let me go to the first one. What I came up with. Uh, let's see. Strolling through my notes. Yeah, sometimes it's like that. <laughs> All right. While you're doing that, I'll, 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 while you're doing that, you, and you can jump in whenever you finish, just so there's just some uh, conversation. I think... Um, 50-50 in a relationship is a misnomer. It's, it's like it's like a couple that's having a kid. That's not 50-50. There's no way in the world that that's 50-50. The female is undergoing 99.9% .9 of the physical stress, all the symptoms, swollen ankles, delivery. The man is just a cheerleader. He's not, he's not enduring anything, particularly if they're not married. If they're married, he's shouldering some more of the burden. But the women is by far is is undergoing 
the most. I don't care what any guy says. You 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 cannot empathize or sympathize. Well, you can empathize, but you can't really physically go through a pregnancy with your wife or with the mother of your child. It's just impossible. So I think more often when um, more often than not, is people need to find a balance because where one person gives in one area, another person should, I saw should give in another area. That way it balances out, which is what people should be seeking in a relationship. They should be seeking balance, balance and counterbalance so everything works out. So an individual that's giving a lot in one area is giving very little in another area. So it makes them feel appreciated. And I think that goes across genders. We date or we're in relationships to get what we want, regardless of how the other person is impacted. And I think that sets the template and the foundation for people withdrawing from dating because they can't find somebody in their area. They just can't find somebody first. What I, what I would tell people is just vet people because I, we, my vetting system is strong. I don't have problems dating, mm -hmm. but I have a set standard that people have to have because if you don't have what I have, then I know you can't give what I can give. So why would I set myself up from failure from the very beginning? Regardless of what the packages look like, I've seen a lot of gorgeous women. I'm just like, nope, she wouldn't make it. Nope, she wouldn't make it. And I'm looking for the slightest little quote-unquote imperfection in the female to get rid of her. Wow. That's just how I work. All right. So yeah, that's great. But, I mean, uh, sometimes you got to have that screening process to determine who's going to make the cut or not. So here we go. Here's the first uh, talking point. Um, when was the last time you heard from him? Does he ghost you on a regular basis? How long will you go before you decide it's over? What keeps you waiting by the phone to see if he will call? Is it his sex game, mental stimulation? Why can't you get him out of your system? Um, hashtag no contact, ghosting, hashtag ghosting, hashtag he will be back. So some of you are going, you know that you're being used in some relationships when he disappears for days. And, you know, when he's there, everything is all good. You're happy. Your mood is stable. Um, you know, you're giddy. Uh, you know, you're treating him like a king and things of that nature. But then he'll disappear. Did somebody come in? Yeah, it's Meta. You said Meta? Yeah. Okay, well, if you got something to say, um, come on in. Uh, drop your science, sister. I mean, you know, when it comes down to a relationship, it got to be two ways. If you're only doing something for somebody without them reciprocating, then it's a waste of your time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So why don't you think most people, why do people still hang on in those relationships when they know it's a waste of time? Because you know it, people know it, they know it for years. You still with me? Loneliness is a hell of a drug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess that is, that, that's that's true. Shan, thanks for um, joining me. Yeah. Shonda, uh, Swanda, thanks for joining me. Um, Gail Price, thanks for um, joining me. Here's another one. Sometimes people can talk to talk but we're never taught adequately how to function in a relationship and they are targets to be taken advantage of in any relationship they account encounter. So meaning that you may think it may, people may seem like they're on the up and up and you may think like they appear <laughs> normal, but they may be lacking like social cues and stuff like that. And some guys, to smell blood like that they can see it like oftentimes and you know I always make parallels to middle school and sometimes me and one of my other buddy teachers we we're like man I feel bad for her like some of the young ladies because you know that when she gets older she's gonna be a target to be taken advantage of be just because their social skills so you may have like some uh, women that giving up their money and guys taking advantage of that or in this scenario with Tina letting Tony um, hold his whip. I don't know for the world of it. I could see if your car um, broke down or something and 
you know, it's, you know, it was a couple days here and there, but if somebody comes in a relationship and they don't have anything, ladies, why in the hell would you just let somebody drop you off at work and they just joyride and, and they're pretty much the owner of your car from that point? Um, so I to say lonely women reek of vulnerability unless they remember how to complete themselves outside of relationships. Yeah, and I guess some people, when when a man knows that you're lonely and they can take advantage of that, they run with it. All right. Moving on to the next one. Anybody, Herb, you got anything to say about that one? Uh, I, yeah, people, I, I think people lead with the wrong thing, and I think that sets people up for, for, for failure in relationships. And that was something I had to... I had to learn with with how I was doing things. It was it's not necessarily bad, but we tend to lead with what we value most. So if you tend to lead with I have this, I have that, you're making yourself a target. So what I would advise people to do is don't lead with anything. Open up like a flower does in the spring, slowly. That doesn't mean you have to necessarily be coy. That doesn't mean you have, you have to necessarily lie. That just means you have to actually understand what it is that some the individual that you're speaking to is looking for because you have some chameleons out there, whether they're male or female, and hey, they'll chime me out your underwear. Have you walking down the street? Oh, but dang, I was fully dressed when I left the house. I ain't got nothing on. <laughs> yeah, there's some some slick talkers out there. And who else came in? Meredith, um, thanks for joining. Erica, thanks for joining. Latanja, um, Twine, Lacey, thanks for joining. Here's another one. You are being used if your mate is only interested in doing things that work for him and does not give a damn whether or not you're happy with his performance. He's totally taking advantage of you. And sometimes that's sexually. If he gets off and he wants you to do everything that pleases him, but he never does anything for you, uh, you're getting used and abused. And I don't know, I mean, maybe you could... Maybe you'll bring it up, but then sometimes you may hear some people say, well, I just like to make him happy. It's about making him happy. And unfortunately, it should be both of you should be satisfied because after a while, you're going to get um, tired of that, especially sexually. He gets what he wants, and then next thing you know, either he's um, knocked out or chilling on his um, phone or whatever and meanwhile you're still you're frustrated you're getting used got to think about it i don't know what you're going to do with that information but uh i'm just putting it out there swanda said everyone enters relationships at their own pace yeah um everyone enters at their own pace well, I think ideally they should enter at their own pace, but sometimes people can kind of dictate, uh, can make that pace, make you step up that pace by by their actions or by questioning or guilt trips or different things like that. So, or your attraction to them. So it's different ways to make people uh, step it up. So it's not always like a slow walk. Uh, yeah, you're you're either I'm sorry, Dave. You're either you're either reacting to something or you're causing the reaction. You can only exist in one or two states. Yeah. Unless of course you're matter, then then you can come together. But somebody says hi, you have one or two options. You do say hi back or you don't. <laughs> it's like they say, yeah, it's you know, life is ninety percent of of what you do to a certain certain situation. Somebody does something, how do you react? Do you withdraw or do you react in a positive manner or do you react in a negative manner? And I think that's a lot of what we see. Somebody will say hi and they won't get the reaction that they're anticipating. So now they turn negative and they start to put that negative energy out there. Some people feed off of that negative energy and never offer the positive energy. And you see that a lot with 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 between male and female the dynamics always seem contentious they're never easy going free flowing you can never really just go out and say you know what i met this individual tonight yo and we just hit it off are you interested no it was just it was just organic it was just a nice time we sat we drank we talked about this we talked about that 
And you, you'll tell a friend, they'll say, well, uh, whether it's a male or female, they'll say, yo, man, yo, you going to smash your deal, yo. So what's up with uh, so-and-so? Are you going to, are y'all going to get together? No, I just enjoy his company. He's somebody I can actually sit and talk to without the stresses of having to worry about everything else. And I think we need those relationships, whether they're male to male, female to female, or male to female. We need those relationships to balance us out. I, I think because that- I think the key issue is maybe sometimes you may not even need to share that information with people. If it feel that good and it's organic, hold on to it. But I know sometimes things feel so good and you just want to share it with somebody and you can't wait to tell somebody like, man, I had the best time. But sometimes you just need to try to hold out without sharing it with anybody. Because a lot of times people have a way that they want to hear the information, but they were ready to throw darts at it. Now, Marcia had a comment, so I want to. Um, yeah, I, I just read it. Yeah, go ahead. She said, first and foremost, I wouldn't have never allowed him to use my car, especially if I thought he would have been out joyriding. And then again, what type of man would have even asked to borrow her car knowing she was in a situation with her daughter? And and when she's trying to reach him and he's not answering her phone calls or even making an attempt to call her back, he could. He could trust and believe once I finally had gotten in contact with him and told him to bring my car home, he would never be allowed to ever use it again. The next time he got in my car, he would be a passenger. That's for sure. Um, hold on. So, Nicole Ison, thanks for joining me. Wanaki, what's going on, family? Thanks for joining me. Uh, Swan said, I'm confused. Would that not be the basis of a happy relationship? Um, I'm not sure who yeah. that's. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm talking about, oh, I, I was talking about in reference to those people that you can really communicate with. You sit there, you enjoy their company, you have great time, you get along well. That sounds like, you know how people say, I don't want to be with this person because it would ruin our friendship? Uh-huh. Aren't those the basis of the best relationships to have a friendship for that person who that you end up with to actually be one of your closest friends? I'm going to say no, and here's why. If I'm in a relationship, I want there to be a respect factor. I've been around friends who have done dirty shit. I don't want to be around my partner who's going to do something dirty, so I want there to be the boundary that we won't cross. Friends have been known to cross boundaries across humanity for all time, and we find out that some of the people that are closest to us are the ones who are willing to violate us the worst. So yes, you want, in my opinion, this is strictly my opinion, you want that rapport that you can go hang out with that person, but you also want the ability to be able to disengage because every every relationship you have has its dynamics. The question is, are you willing to risk upsetting those dynamics? Because once a relationship goes physical, the dynamics change because now people start to feel like they possess you. They have ownership over you because you've shared an intimate moment. And depending on the mindset of the individuals involved, that can end catastrophically. So why do we need to act people? Why do we need to actually take that next step? If the feeling isn't mutual and it isn't understood all the way around that this could end in disaster. So the question you have to ask yourself is, is it really worth it? Because I would rather I would rather have 15 female friends that I have embedded that I can call up and say, "Yo, you know what? Let's go. Let's go out and have a bite to eat. Grab a, grab something to drink." Because I can do that with any of my own boys. But sometimes I want that feminine energy. Sometimes I want to look at a woman that looks nice in a dress, without having to worry about betting her, because now it takes a load off of her shoulders. It takes a load off of my shoulders. And we are actually in the moment. She better look I'm nice in the dress. Say it again. She better look nice in the dress, or you could have hung out with your homeboy. Yeah, and you know. So I'm not type <laughs> I of guy. That was I, mean. I, I want female companionship, and I don't necessarily want to have sex all the time in the, in the presence of a female. As 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 odd as that sounds to hear a guy say that, I, nobody loves. Well, I won't say nobody, but hey. I love sex probably more than most people, 
but I understand that every time I'm in the presence of a female, it doesn't have to end on a sexual note. And I recently said this to some, uh, to, to, a, to a, uh, female. She said, why don't guys get that? I said, they do. It just takes time because we're not wired like that. When women have sex, they are given the, the most intimate part of themselves. The, w- without a doubt. The second, the second most valuable thing a female has besides her virginity is her mind. And this, and this is old pimp game. This is why a lot of pimps try to get a woman's head because if you catch a woman's head, everything else is coming with her. She got no choice. And this is where we started getting to relationships, being manipulated. And the comment that Sawanda made about, um, I'm confused about the, the basis of a relationship. That's the basis of a relationship. And that's how people get taken advantage of. Women get taken advantage of, men get manipulated. This is why you find a lot of men that lash out. Because until you understand what attracts you to people, you you will never be able to figure out why you're dating a certain type of person. And I had to go through an epiphany when I was 30. I had to figure out why am I was dealing with women that are trying to set me up with false claims of being pregnant. And I went for a, a stretch of four years where I just didn't date. That's because I had to understand myself and what I was pursuing. And once I understood that, it was like the sky opened up on a on a great day with the thunderstorms and rain just beating down on me. And, and I haven't had problems since. Hmm. But I had to ask myself, her, what are you doing? Why are you dating these kind of chicks? And it, it required a great deal of soul searching and backtracking to find out the commonalities from the females that I was dating. And once I understood that, stop. No problem. But we have to be willing to do that as individuals. We have to be willing to cut out the toxic person that looks good, the toxic person that speaks well, the toxic person that has all the material things, because if they don't have the immaterial goods, the good heart, the good nature, the willingness to help you out when you might need it, then you don't have to ask, are they really good for us physically? All that good is in gold. But everybody's re- everybody's requirements of a partner are not the same. Correct. So, you know, it, it's like when you put those things out there, what's required for you is not necessarily required for the next person. Correct. So, you know, sometimes you have to be really careful about what it is that when you're, when, when you're talking about you're looking for a partner or you're seeking for a partner, or even if you have a partner, that you have to really evaluate what it is that's important to you and stick to it. And that's part of what people do is they have they have a basis of what they want in a companion, a partner, a relationship, a girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever you want to call it. But then what they do is they falter and they start switching up what it is that they want. But everybody's love language is different. You have to be on the same page with somebody. So when you're saying, is this what they have? That's not necessarily what the requirement is for the next person. Yeah, nobody... uh... Yeah, nobody could set the table and say this is the the manual or this is work. Like you said, it, everybody is different. Some some people want different things based on the love language. Um, but the issue is when you falter off and you know what you want, but then you settle and you end up going for something that you know that this is totally against what you always believed in. And this is when, when you get into these um, failing relationships. But I got a couple more talking points. In it, uh, but one of them, I might as well jump to this, is this had been going on for a couple days, um, this comment. And this was by his brother Aleem Gaines. And he said, this is simply my opinion. He said, courting is for um, your teens and your 20s, ladies. Once you hit 30s, you are too old to be courted. I noticed that the older a woman gets, she wants to be courted more. Courting is for a female in her youth, preferably one who doesn't have children. In a woman's youth, the, a man, the man she generally deals with don't or didn't have to court her. The attraction was pretty much on point from the jump. Older women, women in their mid to late 30s, 
uh, end up, I classify as older women, need to understand that if dating is to happen, romance, romance needs to be fairly immediate. So I'm assuming they saying things need to jump off immediately uh, once you get older. Men are not going to spend hard-earned money on women who are not interested from the jump in terms of romance. Men don't like to have our time wasted by women. And there's a plethora of serial time wasters among women today. So that that this joint would have been going on for like three four days people going back and forth <laughs> <laughs> you know he dropped that man it was like hiroshima man Beautiful boy that was like and but 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 he spoke the truth and i and i think people need to understand that courting and dating is not the same and i had a woman ask me what the difference was and i broke it down to her i said essentially the royalty of the day they courted because more often than not, courting led to a marriage where dating doesn't necessarily have to. Sometimes people go on dates, just to go on dates. And there was an article posted, I think, um, I can't remember what, what newspaper it was, that cited there's some women that go on dates strictly for the food. I think it was 30%. Mm. So that's, that's what he, in part, what he was alluding to is that men aren't, aren't you know, they're, they're, they're done with just spending money on women who are uh, who are just essentially utilizing them for a meal. And I, I, tell, I tell you this, date second, sex first. If you do not want to pay, and I stress this, if you do not want to pay, then you got to make that know from the jump that you are expecting a payout after the bill is paid and the tip is dropped. Because if she ain't dropping those, then you ain't paying. You you have to make that known, and it might rub her the wrong way, but it's gonna save you a lot of anger. And I've often said this: I would rather piss somebody off and be happy than to be pissed off and miserable. I'm gonna base. So that- I think I think part of that comes down to you know just the the the, the different rules of get, of dating and relationships and how people have these new different sub subtitles and other stuff that didn't exist before, like the 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 friends with benefits and situationships yes. and yes. cats. But you see, the, when, when you're talking about courtship and dating and all these other things, that's as if to say that no one over a certain age wants to remarry or marry in the first place, and that doesn't make any sense. That's something where, you know, he's taking people concepts of casual dating and trying to place them on everybody and that doesn't well, even that, that doesn't work for everyone hold on i need you to I, it, it, <laughs> it's like basically that topic came up and it's like wait a minute when did this happen why is it that suddenly you know old women are worth dating and then all the different so-called statistics and data came out for african-american women and that's where it really got heated because that's as if to say that we're not, we're, we're, we're no longer worthy of marriage or courtship. And courtship is just basically, it's not based upon whether or not somebody's going to pay for the date. A courtship is based upon how someone is approaching a relationship. That is not casual dating. That is the difference. Going, anybody can pay for a date or pay for an expensive dinner. But courtship is a whole lot different. It's a whole array of behaviors that are intertwined more so than just a dinner date. You're correct, but what he was getting at was this. Courtship is usually the beginning of a union between two people who are going to have kids. Rarely in our time, especially in our time, do you find women who don't have children in their 30s who want to start having children. That's what he was referencing when he made the statement. He's not talking about uh, women dating. He's talking about women being courted because courtship, like I said earlier, involved the being the together of two people to build an empire. Rarely do people start having families in their 30s. That, that's where the argument gets nuanced, and I think people want to bring everything in to a nuanced discussion. Your outlook on life as a 22-year-old is not the same as it will be at 33, and certainly not the same as it is at 43. So when you're in your late 30s or your mid to late 30s, you're not thinking about having kids. At least I, I know I wasn't. At that point, I was like, that ship has sailed. I mean, and you can do this, anybody can do this on their Facebook profile. You can ask 
women specifically, because men, it, it's really not affecting them because they're not going through the pregnancy. Ask a woman that's older than 35 if she wants to start having more kids and see what she says. And I, and I think um, to piggyback on what her was saying, without him saying that, he was he was pretty much talking about the sex market value. Uh, yeah. And I think the terminology, and they say once a woman get a certain age, that it declines. Uh, that's why some guys won't push towards that. They're not going to have all that. So when you're younger, that's why they put more into it. So that's, I think that's from the angle he was approaching when he was saying twenties and, um, you know, when you're younger. Oh, okay. See now when, when we're pushing data and information like that currently, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm not just trying to stick on color or stay on color, but currently the largest demographic of educated individuals in this country are African-American like, women. women. You have the majority, that, like they have the largest group of educated individuals mm -hmm. by percentage. So therefore, because of this, a lot of African-American women are having their children later or starting families later after they are educated after they become a uh, uh, have started a career so that that concept of people don't get married unless they're in their teens and 20s is absurd because nowadays no one wants to get married when they're broke <laughs> it's not like when our parents or our grandparents were doing these courtship we understand the importance of of begin of obtaining an education and beginning a career and then starting a family so that's why, you know, it's, it's kind of like, wait a minute, I think they're pretty lost on this because that's not necessarily true. And then the other mis, uh, the other mis, misinformation is the fact that people don't believe that African American women can, or people, period, can have children past the age of 35. That's another one of those things where it's, it's pretty much where we, this age was thrown out there and people ran with it and believed it. There's a couple, let me get in here, because I, I know you're getting ready to get off today. There's a couple things with that. First of all, and number one, and most importantly, the older a woman is, the higher the risk pregnancy is. So women in her mid-30s is, is trading into very dangerous territory when having a kid that late. The eggs generally aren't as viable. The child is more susceptible to um, uh, birth defects or congenital diseases. Number two, yes, black women, by percentage, are the most educated demographic in the United States of America. The data supports that. You get no argument from me. The problem with that is black women value their education more than they do the man. So this is why you have a plethora of black women that can't find a suitable mate because they think their mates aren't as educated. Black men have never been as educated as black women. So we're always behind the eight ball on that. We were looked at as manual laborers even during times of slavery. The black woman was taught to read before the black man because the black man was in the field being the manual labor. So that's always going to be an imbalance. So the question is, where does that black woman find the balance at? Because, yes, we all want to be smart. We all want to be educated. We all want to be articulate. But that's not going to happen across the board because the average person can't afford to go to college. This is why student loan debt becomes so crushing. And the average black woman who has a bachelor's or a master's or even a doctor's finds herself and economic pearl because those student loans come call it and they they want their money so you have to find the balance there the balance like i said before black women control the culture there's no question so the question becomes what do you want do you want the education or do you want some education in the family because ultimately the happiness for a black woman is what she chooses <sighs> great conversation uh and we we went over the um time and i don't mind that i mean i um ultimately i want to stick to the um script and get off on time but i'm not on, on nobody's time uh like i have been before but you know, i mean we could keep it rolling for a few more minutes okay but the thing is it amazes me how all of this have worked out it, when you think about it and when you think growing up and you had the so-called beautiful women that you wanted to date 
and the guys that were educated, nerdy, geeks, couldn't even couldn't even look at those women, had no opportunity or no chance to even think about those women. And it was the uh and some of the women were still, they were smart, they were bright, they were intelligent. Because even me working in every level in the school, it's usually always the girls that um, get higher grades, except uh, the kids, you know, the foreign kids um, that come over who appreciate education, but the ones the ones that are here, the Americans, they I mean, kind of devalue, not all, education. So it makes you... You just sit back and you say, wow, how, you know, how things have, have changed. And again, we couldn't, a guy that was on point with his schooling couldn't, couldn't think about uh, hollering at a young lady that uh, the ones that they caught, quote unquote, was defined the pretty ones. And then, you know, it, everything has flip flopped over the years. So it, it amazes me how things have turned. Then I think at a certain point, women realize, all right, we don't want that riff raff. Now I want that guy that's that engineer or that brainiac, but he may be turned off uh, because he have, may have stuff in his mind back like, oh, your ass didn't want me back in the days. So now I'm moving towards something else or maybe stepped outside the race or something. So it's a lot of different factors that play into all of this, unfortunately. Let me address a conversation that's, that's in the chat. Shan, what makes you personally, because I'm directing this towards you, what makes you personally pursuable by a man? You're saying women want to be pursued, but this is the, this is the thing, you can't dictate a man pursuing you. So if you don't put yourself in a position as a pursuable female, then why be upset when a man does not choose you? It's the same thing that men have heard for decades. She didn't choose you, but you got to take that on the chin. Improve yourself. So what makes you pursuable? And me, to go back on to it, and I know when you talk about the dinner dates and all that stuff, sometimes you uh, a man wants a woman to show their appreciation and i know i joke around and i used to say for years make me a damn sandwich make me a damn <laughs> sandwich or something turkey and cheese something to show your appreciation um you, you gotta you gotta show something because um i'll be damned if i'll be going crazy uh trying to uh court or pursue someone and they not giving anything back it got to be something that you got to be giving back and i think some guys uh they fall back on that they fall back on that conquest because they like you know you're not giving nothing in return now let me let me read yeah. let me read this perspective then you uh got it this one guy this perspective he said 97.5 percent of the women he meets he just wants to sleep with one time, two times, three times, five times. And he said less than 3% of the women he meets does he even remotely thinks about them becoming his serious girlfriend or potential wife. I said, those numbers are mind blowing. I wonder how many other men numbers are compatible to this guy. Ladies, do you really think you would fall into that 3% percentile so he's pretty much saying 97.5 he like oh i won't sleep with her you know how many times and only three percent that he say man this could be wifey so when it's you line 10 of them up line. when you line 10 women up only three of them could step forward and he'll say man y'all made it to the next round now that's just one guy's perspective so I wonder how many other guys really think like that and may not be saying it. Because sometimes a lot of guys think a certain way, but they just follow suit to what the uh, women expect them to do. 
and those be the ones that be doing a lot of shit underhanded. Like I said earlier, when they control the culture, it, it wasn't like this in our parents' generation. They found somebody young, married young, had kids, had family. With freedom comes that responsibility. And, and now that the market has been opened up, no pun intended, men have found themselves, especially men that are well-to-do, men have found themselves in an advantageous position to be able to say, you know, I just want you for sex. I just want you for sex. You have the potential to be a wife. Now, I don't know. Personally, I can't, I can't say that because I don't really, I don't really, when I was younger, perhaps. Now, no. I'm not necessarily interested in, in a female strictly for sex. Does that happen on occasion? Yes, but does you know, between any female that I'm dealing with in that capacity, I'm trying to get to know anyway. So I'm beyond, but I'm in my late 40s, so I'm beyond just a better woman, just a better woman. That for me, that, 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 that doesn't even equate to anything. That's just like, yeah, that's, that's high school, college. Yeah. I'm, I'm into establishing a rapport in the relationship. Even if we don't sleep together, I know I can call you and say, hey, you know what, what are you doing? Let's go do this a couple of days from now. Let's go do this. That's the type of guy I am. I can't say a lot of guys are like that. And, 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 that's, the, and that's the thing. Like, like people have their different things that they look at. And you had made a point that Herbert said, you said you look for the littlest things and you kind of um, cut them off. And some guys... They may be looking at the physical thing. And remember, we were on the tiki boat, and I said, you know, I like a woman oh, with a little, a little sassiness, a little sassiness, but I like a woman with also bring, like, some calmness. I, I don't want to be going back and forth with somebody. I, I, I just refuse to do that. I do that all day at, uh, at work, going back and forth yeah. with kids. So I don't want a, a woman that I feel like I got to argue back and forth or you got to challenge everything. And I'm not saying that. I want somebody just to bow down, but sometimes everybody just got to eat a little humble pie. Like I'm not even gonna argue mm -hmm. that, whatever. But some people just don't know how to eat any humble pie, and they know that they need to have that in two scoops, but they just gonna argue it anyway. Then finally, after a few days, they may say, "Well, you was right. I just was. I just didn't want you to. I just didn't want you to um, know that you was right. So I kept going. Nobody wanted to go through that shit when you get older." Really? Yep. Let me read this comment yep. Marcia said. She said, I personally feel that a seasoned and mature woman deserves to be dated as much as a younger woman for the simple reason the dating period is usually the time when the two people are getting acquainted with one another. If nothing else to see if there's any true chemistry between them, um, which doesn't have to be involved any type of sexual encounter. What I mean by chemistry would be... Uh, types of interests, life, ambitions, goals, and etc. Uh, Angel Palmer, thanks for joining me tonight in the counselor's corner. So we're going to wrap it up in a couple minutes, but I definitely enjoyed the dialogue and we can go on and on. And that's the thing. Like I said, these conversations don't end. They just build off one another. Uh, and we never get to the bottom and there's no wrong or right answer. Nobody has the right answer. We just have our opinions and our perceptions based on our life experiences. But it's a beautiful thing to hear people um, life experiences and their different perceptions. That's why you shouldn't shun anybody's uh, experiences out because maybe you could take bits and pieces from them and kind of mesh it in with, uh, with yours and grow. So I don't understand why people feel like, oh, I don't want to hear what this person got to say and this and that. That's You, you can't just tune people out. You can't tune them out at all. You got to listen to what people have to say. And then that's when you, um, you know, make your um, decisions. But everybody has some good or some, some good qualities or something good to say. Yeah, I might disagree with that, but hey. Anybody? No, I know. I'm, 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 I'm with you. But that, and I think that's the thing that uh, Marcia needs, needs to understand is that women feel, and I understand that, women feel that they, they should be 
held in the same light across the spectrum of their life. And unfortunately, life doesn't work like that. They've alluded to it before with your sexual market value. When you're young, you are at your most fertile, your most physically attractive state to the average man. Very rare is it that the 45-year-old woman looks as good as the 25-year-old woman. It, it's rare. Happens, yes, but it's rare. As a man, we tend, as people, period, we tend to be attracted to the physical first. So if a package of something doesn't excite the senses, then anything else coming behind that isn't probably going to see the light of day. It's just, it's just like if I place a plate, a plate of food in front of you. If that plate of food doesn't look appetizing, you're not going to eat it. And, and you, 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 with, you know, you're, you're saying that, right? But <laughs> mm -hmm. um, there is actually evidence that people change what is physically attractive to them as they age. Sure. So, you know, it, 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 it's like um, if, if you're 20, 20, 25, right, mm -hmm. and you like her little 24-inch waist, mm -hmm. yeah, um, women in their 40s don't have a 24-inch waist. Mm -hmm. They don't have perky boobies. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some of them have wrinkles. They have a few gray hairs. They may have cut mm -hmm. their hair short instead of having down, hanging down their back. But that mm -hmm. doesn't mean that they're less desirable. No, no, because no, no. their desires change. But, and most of but, us, we're just not, we, I'm, 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 you know, we're just not attracted to the same thing at 45 that you were at 25. It changes. In fact, in fact, what really also happens is that the physicality takes a back seat to what 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 type of, of characteristics that the person has with their personality and what are they doing with their life? How do they treat you? How do they make you feel? The way that they look starts to really become less important the older you get. Correct. But this is the thing that women need to factor in. For men there is still a sexual component to it. So you have to ask yourself as a woman, am I dating for a relationship or am I just dating for a companionship? Even men at, at advanced ages still have, not that women don't, they still have the urge to be physical because it's in the man's nature to be so. For women, not so much, especially once a woman hits menopause, her hormones fluctuate, all of a sudden her sex drive takes a tremendous hit. So while you still may be desirable or in your mind you might be desirable to or unworthy of being pursued by a man, you have to ask yourself, what is the end game? Do I just want to be in the company of a man or do I actually really want to be in a relationship with a man? Because once you enter a relationship, there are going to be certain expectations. If those expectations are not met, there's going to be a problem. And this is where the infidelity usually kicks in. You see people that get married late, and and uh, and it may not even be infidelity. The man might breach breach the um breach the topic of bringing in a partner to spice up quote unquote the sex life because the sex life with you isn't what he desires. Or it could be the opposite. It could be the female that that has a higher sex drive, so she might want to bring in the guy, and the guy's like, "What the hell is wrong with you? You're not bringing another man into my house." So that dynamic needs to be it needs to be balanced because yes for me the physical takes a back seat to the mental to if we're compatible to if i can see myself with you long term because i don't mind the female who doesn't look as good at 45 as she did at 25 but the thing is do you have all those other qualities that i want can i sit and have a conversation with you because some people I just can't have a conversation with because it's like they said, it's always argumentative. So a lot of women think they, that they are that package until they actually sit down and wonder why everybody else their age is engaged in some type of relationship or they're out dating consistently and they're still on the marriage around trying to find somebody just to have a conversation with. That's why. We have to value ourselves well, but we also have to juxtapose that to what other people see in us. And, and, and this is funny. Um, I was reading this, I read this on twice on Facebook today. 
I'm in the process, and as morbid as it sounds, I'm in the process of writing my own obituary. This, for me, it allows me to look at myself through other people's eyes. And I, and I came up with this, with a conversation that, that some, with somebody that was on my friends list on Facebook, and she was saying, I'm Del I'm boy. I said, well, why do, you, why do you feel like that? She said, because I'm pregnant, you know, me and my husband are separate. And I said, well, look at it like this. I said, list all your good qualities. Have some conversations with some people and see what they think about you as a person. And write those things down. Write all those things down that you believe other people will be interested in and lead with those things because we all can do with a little prep talk every now and then because life, life beats us all. I don't care who you are. So you have to find a way to keep yourself upbeat and motivated. You have to find a way to keep yourself going when times aren't as great because that's when doubt creeps in and once doubt creeps in and it takes a it takes a firm hold then you have problems like me i had doubts daily but those doubts get beat down by all the successes i have so every day i every day i i, I come home from work i'm looking at my success every day i leave the house i'm looking at my success to the point where i don't even think about my failures i don't think i've ever failed at anything in life now, that's a lot. I failed a lot. But that's the confidence that I have, that everything I do is going to turn out to be good in the long run. And a lot of people, they don't have that. They don't have that confidence. They don't have that self-worth. They're beaten down by life. And you see them, and they just look old. They look defeated. And and, and I find myself doing this. I'm just like, you and I are the same age. I'm a few years old. And you, man, you look like you've been through hell. And they say, man, I have, man, you know. I got to deal with my baby mama. I got to deal with this, man. The job stressing me. You got to find an outlet. Yeah, that's good. Got to find a way to keep yourself physically, mentally, and spiritually happy and healthy. Don't depend on anybody else to do for you what you should be doing for yourself. Yeah, and, and that's because they around. They can't have that. Ba- they, they don't have that balance of people, those positive people. So when you constantly, whether you're at a job, you're getting beat down. You're in a relationship, you're getting beat down. You ain't making expectation with your kids. You're getting beat down. Your ass is going to look old as hell. So you have to uh, you have to find a way. And like Herb said, I mean, me, you can take L's, but it's how you respond to it. Can you get up from it? Right. And um, I'm one. I'm always going to try to get up and figure out, okay, how what can I do different to make this work and keep pushing forward? But you gotta, you know, you gotta have resilience. You gotta have grit. Yeah, and and not everybody has that. They can have it, but it you can't teach heart, and it has to be. No. In, it has nope. to be in your okay. um, heart. But man, we went way over. I I was extra nice, but I <laughs> I um and I was a stickler. I was on point for like three, four weeks. Like yo, ten o'clock, we done. Went over. Uh, but I'm going back to my nine to ten next time but i definitely appreciate the dialogue and this is what we do uh, uh, in the counselor's corner so like i said i might have like 18 19 talking points and i know that i'm only gonna get through three but i'm okay with it because then we just go i'm gonna come up with the next topic as soon as i get off this i might throw a watch party for this and then i'm back in the lab thinking about the next show uh, I'm not going on nobody else's page on social media like, where could I get a topic from? I'm already, I already got my stuff laid out and ready to make, um, ready to make moves. So I'm going to close it out because unfortunately my secretary, she's in the Bahamas and I'm at work in the office by myself and I had some angry parents calling and they giving me attitude. <laughs> so I got to be sharp and I'm like, oh, hell you talking about you ain't talk to me but <laughs> i gotta be on point i guess as ricky smiley said you never know what somebody's going through the customer you have to um smile you have to be nice and pleasant boy it was a couple of them i was ready to cuss their asses out today and <laughs> so tomorrow man, I know how you feel, man. i'm in customer service man <laughs> I, man that man do i know how you feel sometimes i sat mad in, in bewilderment so tomorrow, day two brings another challenge. So when she comes back, uh, I always say, she's like, oh, you're probably not going to miss me. 
I was like, I'll hold it down. She's like, oh, you're going to be fine. Uh, when you get back, I'm so happy you're back here. I'm so happy. I'm going to give you a gift when you return. Uh, so, like I said, I appreciate everybody who chimed in, who was in from the beginning, came um, came in. The, um, you know, the dialogue through uh, throughout the commentary, the call-ins. Who was that? Swanda who called in. Herb. Um, People who joined in for hanging out with her and just overall keep it positive. Please share the video and let's keep growing, keep building, and see you. What's today? Monday. Probably see you um in a yeah, couple days. Like and, yeah, see you in a couple days. And again, thank you all. And feel free to keep the dialogue going throughout. And know I know some people have posted something and I didn't posted some comments and I didn't get a chance. I'll go through, read them and and we could keep the dialogue going but like i said please share like i said i'll rerun it for um a watch party and like i said i appreciate y'all and everybody have an enjoyable week stay cool and again everybody have a good night and thanks herb for your um your insight no doubt, man, this topic. all right now talk I'm to everybody soon all right all right all right peace everyone